Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 64 of the Orthway Valpal podcast. I am your host, Paul Markey. And as the holidays get closer here, we're real close to Christmas. Um, it's going to be really difficult to get all of these uh, podcasts in and uh, right on time. Like I know some of you expect them all on uh, Tuesday morning, bright and early. Um, but I apologize if we can't get these right on, but I am going to do some ahead of time. We're going to put them on, make sure that we get something in every week during the holidays so that you can listen to something if you, you just happen to be maybe uh, exercising or out for a walk or something like that or in your car on a long trip and uh, you want to uh, just get a little informed on some of the things that we do um, where I work and, and and how I like to evaluate patients, then uh, you'll have the opportunity to do that. So um, please bear with me if uh, these don't all come out just as uh, we would like them to. Uh, but in today's episode, we're going to be talking about um, C5 nerve root compression. Now, what does that have to do with orthopedics uh, and orthoid valve, pal? Well, I will tell you, on a almost daily basis, I see patients with nerve root compression problems. Now, we just went through a, a, a superset podcast uh, with the lumbar spine where we did um, L2, 3, 4, 5, and S1, um, did it uh, every day. We're going to do basically the same thing in the cervical spine so you can recognize what this is. Why is this so important? It's because there are so many lookalikes out there, okay? You may think somebody has a um, uh, lateral epicondylitis and they might have a cervical spine problem. You may think somebody has carpal tunnel and it's a cervical spine problem, um, and so so you, there are many things that look like other diagnoses. Um, by understanding nerve root compression problems, um, you can tease these things out and not miss them because when you do miss them, they can be uh, life changing for patients. So I want to break down the nerve roots uh, individually, talk about what their signs and symptoms are and what are the what are the common findings. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how we manage them and, um, you know, where we go from there. So, um, and I also have some really nice videos on the cervical spine with actual patients with actual diagnoses so you can see what they, they look like. Not all of them are classic. This morning I had a gentleman who came in and uh, he called me up at 8.30, 9.30. We got him in took a quick look at him to find that uh, he had uh, some uh, C5, significant C5 involvement. And um, I really should have videotaped this one because it was great. It fell right into place. Um, but let's talk about it uh, in just a bit. I want to um, just take a word from our sponsors and uh, we'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us, folks. Um, so let's talk about the C5 nerve root. Um, let's let's just kind of break this down. We'll, we'll talk about the common signs and symptoms. And as far as sensation goes, people will commonly complain of shoulder dysfunction, okay? Oftentimes, I, I don't know how many people I've seen who have been diagnosed with shoulder tendonitis, rotator cuff tears, um, adhesive capsulitis, and things of that sort when they actually have a C5 nerve root compression problem. So they'll typically complain of some shoulder discomfort. Sometimes that pain will migrate down the bicep area and uh, down to the antecubital fossa. Um, and that's the common area where you would see a pain pattern and even loss of sensation. Now, as far as uh, weakness goes, uh, they will lose strength in their deltoids, uh, both uh, for shoulder flexion and abduction. They'll lose strength in their biceps uh, and uh, lose the ability to supinate the forearm well. So if you see somebody who comes in with weakness in the supination and, and elbow flexion, shoulder flexion, shoulder abduction, you need to be somewhat suspicious that there is a C C5 uh, lesion going on here. If it's an isolated uh, rotator cuff, you don't typically lose much at the elbow. Um, and so make sure that you tease that out, okay? Um, what is the reflex? The C5 reflex is most dominant at um, the biceps, distal biceps tendon. Make sure that you relax that arm really well. If you want to see um, a video on how we do um, biceps testing, the upper extremity, I'll have that in the link. And uh, you can take a look at that. And uh, I, in that video, I talk about techniques of how to test um, the biceps and uh, all the other upper extremity uh, deep tendon reflexes. With these folks, you'll also see a positive Sperling's test most of the time. 
I like the Spurlings only in the fact that when you move their neck, if they have arm pain, it tells you it's coming from the neck. The problem with the Spurlings test is it doesn't really tell you what level it's at. Um, that's why I like to do the marquee maneuver, which will also be linked in today's notes. Um, and so like this gentleman we had this morning, placed him on his back. We do not give these folks pillows. We let them extend the neck. Um, and then he had significant uh, pain starting in the shoulder, going down into the biceps area. When we tested him while he was supine with no pillow under his head, he had weakness into supination, weakness into elbow flexion. We tractioned his neck, put him into 15 degrees of flexion while we did that, 15 degrees to the opposite side, gave him traction. Not only did he get relief, he had a significant improvement with his biceps and supination. Um, and so um, I like to do the marquee maneuver. It's something I developed several years ago. I know it's not uh, out there in mainstream. I'd like it to be. So if anybody's interested in doing research uh, so we can get this thing published, uh, please uh, get in touch with me and uh, maybe we can work together on something. But this test works really, really well. I use it all the time and uh, all the people in our five clinics use it also with very good success, not only to identify the level of the lesion and to identify that it's a nerve root problem so we can tease out shoulders, um, but it's, a, a, in my opinion, a much better predictor on how people do after surgery uh, and how well they will do with surgery, especially if they can get a decompression. So um, I like to do the marquee maneuver. Um, it, one thing you need to know about C5 of all the cervical nerve roots, it seems to be the wimpiest. It seems to be the one that um, if you don't recognize it right away and you go too long before surgical intervention or before treatment and decompression of some sort, um, you're at high risk of having some permanent nerve damage. And so, you know, if you lose your biceps and you lose uh, supination, you're going to lose some pretty significant function and even shoulder flexion and, and abduction. So make sure you try to recognize it early. What are the lookalikes? Okay, what does a C5 look like? It looks like a, it could be a rotator cuff tendonitis, rotator cuff um, could look like adhesive capsulitis, can't lift that arm uh, because it's weak and you also have pain in that area. So um, any of those things can fall into place. Um, but if you have painless weakness, you need to be thinking neurological. Um, the other thing it could look like, it could look like a biceps rupture. But if there's been no mechanism, no like abrupt elbow flexion uh, or shoulder flexion combination, elbow flexion, uh, you might want to rule that out, especially if they don't have any palpable tenderness to the biceps area. Um, so with that being said, um, make sure you uh, check out the link on this one because we're going to have a video um, to a patient who has a C5 nerve root compression problem. I saw this lady several years ago. I want to say maybe three or four years ago. I just bumped into her recently at a health fair. Um, this this lady's great. She, she came right over. She gave me a huge hug, said she's better than ever, totally functional and very, very happy. Her quality of life has significantly improved um, since we identified the problem and expedited surgery. We knew she was not a, a conservative candidate that she needed to have surgery because of the severe uh, weakness that she had. I uh, would check out that video. And um, that gal is now, uh, you know, 100% doing excellent. And we also have a video of how to do the marquee maneuver. So if it's something you want to uh, try out, it's a very safe test. And uh, I enjoy doing it. I love it. Um, and uh, I developed it and use it constantly. The other um, test, special test that I'll have in video is going to be the Spurlings test. So make sure you check all those out. We'll have those in uh, more videos to come. We'll be talking about C5, C6, C7, um, C8. We'll be talking about T1. We'll talk about what the presentation is like um, and, and what they uh, they look like and what the lookalikes are so you don't um, mistake them for something else. So folks, thank you so much for um, sitting in and listening uh, to our podcast really enjoy it. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. Uh, if you go to Facebook, go to Ortho Eval Pal. Uh, we'll uh, let you in on the on the uh, private uh, closed uh, Facebook group. There I have all kinds of interesting uh, diagnoses, patients that I see, and I also post our Facebook, uh, not Facebook, but podcasts over there also. And um, make sure you go to our website and uh, check us out there. We have uh, some great information. And uh, we're going to be starting some webinars pretty soon for a really great rate. And um, we'll be talking about actual patients with actual problems. And we're going to break down orthopedic injuries, um, you know, one at a time. And uh, we're going to give you lots of content for a really good price. And so make sure you, uh, you stay tuned because that will be uh, coming out soon. So again, thank you very much and have a great day.